All right, all right. Ladies and gentlemen, you are welcome to another great session with the presidential candidate of the fictional Common Sense People's Party. Now, you cannot fight grace. You just cannot fight grace. That man, Peter Obi, is grace personified. The name Peter Obi has come and it has come to stay. The man is not only a hero in Nigeria, he is currently the biggest and the most influential politician on the continent of Africa, even without holding any political office. Now, the government of Bangladesh, in conjunction with the Commonwealth Enterprise and Investment Council, organized a global conference, one of the biggest global economic conferences in recent time. Many world leaders attended. Now, guess who their guest speaker from Africa was? Your guess is right. It was none other than His Excellency Peter Obi. And as usual, he gave a very, very captivating speech. Data, statistics, and all the relevant information to the point he was making were well contained in that speech. And at the end of the day, Everything was centered on how it positively impacts the common man. He centered the speech around the common man. How do all these ideas and all this data positively impact the common man? And as soon as this speech made it to the social media, a lot of Nigerians began to talk. Some began to curse the pept judges. They say, this is the man that they wanted. Why did these people deal them this kind of blow? But before I show you this great captivating speech and how Nigerians reacted, let me quickly show you this shocking news coming out of Benue State. Federal government said they plan to build thousands of houses for Fulani headsmen to settle down in Benue State so that they will not be having clashes with the farmers in Benue State again. And Benue State people became very angry. They said with all the internally displaced persons, government is now thinking of how to settle Fulanis in that same Benue State. They said they will never accept. And look at how the papers reported it. FG's 1,000 houses, Benue tribal leaders vowed to resist planned Fulani colony. The leaders of Benue State social cultural groups and tribal leaders have vowed to resist any plans by the federal government to build houses and settlements for Fulani headsmen in any part of the state under any guise. The leaders pointed out that the recent hasty announcement by the federal government of its intention to build 1,000 housing units in seven states, including Benue, smacked of mischief and will not be welcomed in the state. The signal we are getting is that the idea may have been conceived, hatched and packaged and handed over to the present administration for implementation. Or how would one explain the hasty manner in which the project scaled through all the hurdles and even build for implementation without the state government getting a whiff of the idea from its conception? Be that as it may, one would have expected that the federal government should have settled the internally displaced persons IDPs in the states before thinking of bringing in outsiders, nay, foreigners, and creating a heaven for them within the states. For the avoidance of doubt, Benue State has over 2 million IDPs that have been neglected by the government to perish in various IDP camps across the states. Oh, the first thing one would have expected was for the federal government to work towards ensuring that displaced persons that have been abandoned in IDP camps across the state are returned to their ancestral homes before contemplating the construction of houses for their antagonists, the Fulani armed headsmen. The ethnic groups in the state have resolved to file behind the state governor, Hyacent Alia, not to cede any portion of the state to anyone, not even the federal government, for the purpose of building settlements for our oppressors. Mm. What a shame. What a shame on the Nigerian government. We are going to see how this will play out in the coming days. Now, on to the wonderful speech by His Excellency Peter Obi at the Global World Conference in Bangladesh. Now, I can only give you a summary of that speech, a very concise version of that speech. But you are still going to feel how intellectually loaded and powerful this speech was. Look at how the papers reported it. Peter Obi in Bangladesh, SMEs, key 
to global economic growth. The presidential candidate of the Labour Party in Nigeria's 2023 election, Mr. Peter Obi, has underscored the importance of small and medium enterprises, SMEs, to global economic growth. Obi's position was contained in the remarks he made over the weekend at a global conference organized by the Bangladesh government in conjunction with the Commonwealth Enterprise and Investment Council in Dakar, Bangladesh. The Labour Party standard bearer argued in his address that the international conference that the Labour Party standard bearer argued in his address at the international conference that SMEs are emerging as the undisputed engine of rapid economic expansion and growth globally. According to the former Anambra state governor, this is Obi speaking now, in Bangladesh, SMEs contribute about 40% to GDP, in Nigeria, 48%, and in China, 60%, with about 7 out of every 10 formal jobs created by the SMEs. Mm, OB. It has the same immense impact in India, where SMEs account for over 40% of the total workforce. OB urged the Commonwealth nations to pay very special attention to small businesses, which have proven to be the fulcrum upon which sustainable and inclusive growth and development can be achieved across Commonwealth countries. He said, this shows an example of what I have said over the years. In 2009, when I visited Bangladesh, the GDP was $102 billion, with a GDP per capita of $688. Today, their GDP is $460 billion and a GDP per capita of $2,700. Their unemployment rate in June 2009 was between 9 and 10%. Today, it is below 5%. The poverty rate also greatly reduced and they have maintained growth of over 6% within the same time. Oh, what a speech. Even the president of Bangladesh cannot do better than this. This man is telling the people of Bangladesh things that even many leaders in that country, I am sure, do not know. And look at how Nigerians reacted. Look at some of the tweet reactions. This tweet says, Trust me, one day Peter Obi will become Nigeria's president. Destiny can be delayed, but not denied. Oh, this guy has the same reasoning as me. And this tweet by Grace says, Peter Obi has become a global iconic symbol. Yes, that's what it is. And this tweet says, Jesus, see admiration around him. Now, wow, what manner of a man is this? He got that center stage to himself. And what a quality, what a quality of speech. And this tweet by Oluomo of Sheffield says, He has been consistent in his dealings and believes exactly the reason someone like me believes in his leadership. Mm. And this tweet says, The difference is clear. It is visible to the blind and audible to the deaf. Peter Obi goes out to advise world leaders for global economic growth, while some other people go out to beg for crumbs. Oh, this one, enter. And this tweet by Ayodeji says, always presidential. That is it. Anytime His Excellency Peter Obi comes out, he always sounds presidential. And I'm still going to search out the video of this speech. And when I find it, I'll show it to you. Now, if you think that it is a coincidence that Peter Obi was speaking at that global conference, then you need to think again. For the organizers of that world conference to have ignored Tinubu and other African leaders, to have ignored all the great economists in Africa, and they singled out His Excellency Peter Obi to speak at that conference, speaks volume. That is the kind of recognition that His Excellency Peter Obi has garnered. So many people know what happened in Nigeria. All over the world, they know what happened in the 2023 presidential election. And you can see how the man, Peter Obi, is carrying himself as a global icon. And the man is indeed presidential in every sense of the word. Anyway, make I leave him here. I still recall that first tweet that says, one day, His Excellency Peter Obi will become the president of Nigeria. I say, this guy's thought 
aligns with mine because everyone on this channel already knows that these are my thoughts and my aspiration and my belief that that day will come sooner than we expect that his excellency peter obi will become the president of the federal republic of nigeria but until then <laughs> Make I still enter town. Make I go get some Ogbonge political news. Where you not go like. Why? Because now, because of Una. Now I did here. So, don't go away.